I'm Kelsey. This is my channel, Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing a fancy booktube hat, and today I'm bringing you my book haul for the combined months of November and December. Now, I didn't purchase myself many books over these two months. From about mid-November to mid-December, I was almost exclusively focused on purchasing books for other people for the holidays. Um, but there were a few that I bought in early November, and I got a ton of books for Christmas. And also a pleasant surprise, so I actually have a whole lot of books to show you today. They've added up. I have one, two, three... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 books to show you. That is a lot of books, so let's get started. And so as always, I'm going to show you the books that I've already read first. I have two of those today. The first one is Digger by Ursula Vernon. I bought this specifically for the Tome Topple Readathon that was in late November. There was a challenge to read a graphic novel over 500 pages. The only way I had to get my hands on this on time was to order this from Amazon. It came partway through the readathon and I was able to read it towards the end and I was very pleased that I did. I will leave my wrap up in which I discussed it so that you can see that if you wish. The other one is Necessity by Joe Walton. This is the third book in the Thessaly trilogy. I am um, I was getting this book for someone else for Christmas. I found it on discount. I got two copies because this was uh, the one book that I needed to round out my own copies of this trilogy. I already have the first two. And I will link my series review of these books as well. All right, so what I'm going to go through next is a four book book outlet order that I purchased right after the election here in the US. I was feeling really devastated and in that moment, the only book that I could really make myself read was a middle grade fantasy novel, and I thought, I want more of these, I'm going to need more of these over the next four years. So I went on Book Outlet and I purchased four middle grade and YA fantasy novels that I think will be good comfort reads for me. The other thing I want to mention about reading middle grade when I'm upset about the world and stressed, I think is not just that it's easier reading and escapist, although it is, but I also find that those are books that um, are often very focused on teaching things like courage and strength, and I think that those are important messages in trying times. So I think three out of the four of these were scratch and dent copies, the other one was very cheap, so I paid very little for these four books. The first one that I have is uh, the Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. This is an old classic fantasy book. This is um, from, when was this published? 1872. And in addition to uh, wanting to read children's and middle grade fantasy, I've been wanting to read some of the older fantasy classics. Um, and this is one that I've been very interested in. The next one is a book that I believe I actually have read before. I think I read it when I was a kid, and I think I borrowed it from a friend, and I think I gave it back, and I think I remember liking it, if it is the book that I think it is, and I think the book that I'm remembering is The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner. I'm going to reread this and see if it is the book that I remember reading before. <laughs> see if it's going to be a reread. Um, this is actually the first book in a series, which I'm sure I did not know when I first read it. And I've learned that since, and I've learned that uh, this author has written this series over a great expanse of years, um, many years between books. She seems like the type of author who wants to get each book right, which is something I personally really value in an author, and she actually has a new one coming out soon. So I would like to give this another try and see if it is the book I remember and see if it, see if I like it as much as I remember liking the vague fuzzy book of my memory. The next book I have is Wildwood by Colin Malloy. This is the first book in a trilogy that looks incredibly twee, and for me that's kind of a good thing. I kind of like quirky twee books, even though I know a lot of people kind of don't. Um, but it also has these gorgeous color illustrations, and I'm hoping that this will be a trilogy that I'll really like. And I've been curious to check this out. I think it takes place in like a fantasy version of Portland, which 
intrigues me. And the last one I have here is YA, not middle grade, and it is Wildwood Dancing by Juliet Marillier. My library inexplicably does not have this, which is the probably the only reason I haven't read it yet. It's one of her most popular books, and it's a retelling of the Twelve Dancing Princesses. It's got this beautiful cover art by Kanuko Y. Craft, who is the same artist who did a bunch of the um, Patricia McKillop covers that I also adore. And I know there is also a sequel to this, if I like it. I have just a few more oddball books before I get to the ones that I got for Christmas. Um, the first is a book that I added to my cart because I wanted it when I made a book depository order of books for people for Christmas. And that is Fairy Tales for Wild Girls by Alice Neer. This is a book that is um, another middle grade fantasy, so and that's sort of why it's in the mix, uh, and it is only published in Australia. So Book Depository is really my only option for reading this book. This gets recommended to me on Goodreads all the time. I think it's a dark fairy tale story. The description really intrigues me. Goodreads insists, and of course I always listen to Goodreads when Goodreads insists. Not always, but in this case, yes. And next I have three books that were a total surprise, and even more a surprise than the surprise. It was a surprise compounded upon a surprise. The first surprise was that I won a Goodreads giveaway, which is, it blows my mind a little because that's statistically so very unlikely. Um, but I won a Goodreads giveaway for uh, an advanced copy of Binti Home, the sequel to Binti, which I enjoyed and actually gave to a couple of people for Christmas. Um, I had been planning on reading this book. I had not been planning on reading it yet, but I have it now. And uh, this comes out in January, I think? Let me check the exact date. January 31st. I may be reading it before then, so look out for a review uh, of this from me at some point. And then the lovely surprise compounded on top of the surprise is that the wonderful people at Tor.com Publishing apparently decided that not only were they going to send me the book that I won in the giveaway, but they sent me like a whole goodie packet with two extra books. So these are both uh, Tor.com novellas. I think they're both 2016 titles. Let me check. Yes and yes. So one of these I have heard of, and one of them is completely new to me. Hammers on Bone by Cassandra Kaw. I know I have seen uh, this review. I saw the review that Thomas over at SFF 180 did for his horror Halloween week. And um, I'm honestly not really a reader of horror. This is a spin on Lovecraftian stuff, and I've never read Lovecraft but I've heard that this is really good, so I definitely am going to try it and stretch my comfort zone a little. And I think a novella is going to be a perfect length book to stretch my reading horizons a little bit. And then this is the one that I know nothing about. This is called The Warren, and it's by Brian Evanson. I gather that this is sci-fi, that it's sort of dark, and that it's about memory. So this is another book that I probably never would have picked up on my own. I wasn't even aware that it existed, but I will definitely be reading it at some point. It is only 93 pages, and I find that these novellas are just the perfect books for readathons, and now I have a whole little stack of them, and it is fabulous. So thank you, Tor.com Publishing. I should also mention that the, the package they sent me came with two little promotional postcards. This is just the uh, postcard that talks about their sampler, which is available online. And this is a promotional postcard for Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which is the prequel to Every Heart a Doorway that's coming out. I read Every Heart a Doorway. I've loaned out my copy, so I can't show it to you. Um, but it's got, you know, a lovely sneak peek of some of the art here. And then they also sent me these two little button pins with uh, their little spaceship logo on them. I don't know if you can see that at all. Anyhow, so I was just super pleased because I wasn't expecting to win a giveaway to begin with, and then I was super not expecting all the extra goodies. So yay, 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 yay. So last but not least, I'm going to run through the list of books I got for Christmas. I got books from two different people for Christmas. 
Uh, the first three I'm going to show you here are the ones that I got from my mom. I went book shopping with my mom and pointed to the ones I wanted. I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, and they showed up under the tree and I was very pleased. I know it's not a surprise when you get books like that, but still you get all the books you want that you were never going to purchase for yourself. It's great. The first book I have here is When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore. I think I'm probably going to be reading this fairly soon. I am planning on participating in the uh, Holiday Book Tubeathon, which is three days starting tomorrow, I believe, when I'm filming this. It might have already started by the time I get this video up. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous hardcover, and I happen to know that we found it at a great discount, so I'm very pleased with this. This was going to be a book that I was absolutely going to end up getting from the library, but um, this is even better. This is young adult, it is magical realism, and I believe it has some sort of own voices representation in it, so I'm very excited to get to this. The next book is Dreams of Distant Shores, which is a recent um, collection of short stories by Patricia McKillop. I think some of these have been published before, one or maybe more of them hasn't been. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I don't know how well you can see any of these, I'm losing my daylight. It's got an afterword by Peter S. Beagle. I have, of course, been hoarding McKillop's books um, for reading over the next several years. Who knows how long I'll have them stashed up to read, but I've been hoarding them. And I've only read one of her short stories before, and that was in an anthology, so I'm looking forward to reading more of hers. And then I've got The Seventh Bride by T. Kingfisher, who is also Ursula Vernon. She writes adult fairy tale fantasy under the name T. Kingfisher. Most of it is self-published as ebooks. This is the only one of the T. King Fisher books that I know of that's on print, and I didn't think you could even like buy it in a store anywhere. I, th I thought you had to buy it from Amazon, but I saw it in a bookstore, and I said I want this, and my mom got it for me. I think this is a loose Bluebeard retelling, although uh, from what I gather on the back, the previous wives aren't dead, they're just imprisoned, and I'm looking for a lot of awesome girl power in this. And then I also have another family member who always gives me books for Christmas, and I am very pleased with these. There's a good deal of sci-fi here, and I do rely on her recommendations, especially for older sci-fi. The first book is an older sci-fi novel. This is The Revolt. Revolving Boy by Gertrude Friedberg. Now I know she also gave this to me when I was younger and I wasn't, I didn't love it then and I got rid of it. And uh, I was discussing with her whether or not I might like this better now that I'm older, so I'm going to try it again and now I have a copy again so I can read it. Let me get you a publication date on this one. This is from 1966, so sci-fi from the 60s. I really don't know anything about this author. Next, I had specifically asked for some sci-fi by Ursula K. Le Guin. I read The Left Hand of Darkness and I really liked it, but I didn't know where to go next. I had not really liked any of her fantasy that I've tried in the past. Um, and that's unusual for me for authors who write both fantasy and sci-fi. I usually like the fantasy better. Um, so I read The Left Hand of Darkness and then I didn't know which books to go to next for her sci-fi. And so the ones I received are The Dispossessed and uh, the Birthday of the World and Other Stories. Of course, this one is a novel and this is a collection of stories, so I'm very excited to try both. And then my last books I have here are two more that are sort of meant to complement each other. Uh, they are both historical fiction that take place in approximately the same time period, although one of them is real historical fiction and the other is alternate historical fiction with dragons. And that is Mr. Midshipman Hornblower by C.S. Forrester and His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. These are both about the Napoleonic Wars, but one has dragons and one does not. They are also both the first books of series, and so if I like either one of them, there are a whole lot more where they come from. I had this one out from the library, in case you remember I have mentioned it before, um, and then I sort of caught the hint that I might be getting it for Christmas, and I returned it to the library. So I'm glad I was right. And I think the thought here is that if I like one, I might like the other, and vice versa. So I think this is a very clever dual gift. So that was a lot of books. Um, I hope you all got some great books for the holidays, if you get books for the holidays. Oh, one more thing. This is the biggie. So my big gift that I received from my parents this uh, Christmas is a Kindle. 
So I now have the capability to read ebooks, which I did not have before. I'm planning on getting a case for it, so I'll be able to show it to you in the future with a case. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to plan on integrating this with my print reading. I feel like I have a system that works for my print reading, and I'm not sure how I'm going to integrate this in, um, but I'm looking forward to being able to get ebooks from the library via OverDrive that the library maybe doesn't have in print but does have in ebook form. And I'm looking forward to being able to read some of the things that I know uh, are available from authors I'm interested in that are only available in ebook. I'm looking forward to maybe being able to read some more self-published stuff than I would have before. So I think this is going to open up a lot of opportunities for me. I'm not planning on relying on it as my primary reading method, but I'm going to hopefully be supplementing with this. And I'm very pleased. Okay, that's really the end. I, I hope you've gotten some good books over the past two months. If you've gotten something you're really excited about, please share. Um, if you are really excited about any of these books, if you've read them, please share. Anyhow, have a nice day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.